Welcome to Ayurveda and Spirituality with your host, Alakananda Ma, a renowned Ayurvedic expert and a graduate of a top London medical school. She is the principal of Alundi Ayurveda Gurukula, a unique apprenticeship style school in Boulder, Colorado. She is a spiritual mother, teacher, flower essence maker, and storyteller. Join us as we uncover the timeless principles of Ayurveda, discover practical tips for enhancing vitality, and explore the deeper dimensions of spirituality that intertwine with the ancient science of life. Namaste, everyone. Welcome to Satsang. Welcome to podcast. Today, we're going to talk about flower essences. Flower essences is one of the things that I offer in our Ayurveda clinic. I love to do flower essence readings, both for human beings and for their pets, for animals. And those can be done in person and also over Zoom. So what are flower essences? Flower essences are a form of vibrational healing. So with flower essences, the way you make them, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes, the way you make them means you cross Avogadro's limit. It is not any kind of a tea, tincture, or herbal remedy. There are no actual molecules of the flower in the dosage level of a flower essence. You're working with the vibration of that flower as it's been captured in water. How is that done? How does that work? How does it help? We'll talk about that soon. How did I discover flower essences? Let's talk about that first. So we moved to Tucson in, I think it was 1986. It was when we had first come to the United States. In Sadananda's case, when he had returned after his seven-year pilgrimage in India, and in my case, coming for the first time and we were moving around a little bit trying to find our place and at this point we moved to Tucson, Arizona. Uh, Tucson turned out to be a very special place of training. It's the place where I learned Qigong, Jade Egg, Jinshin, and flower essences. How did that happen? Well, we were in either a bookstore or a grocery store. I don't remember which. We were putting up our own flyers, which back then in the days before social media was the way of letting people know who you were and what you were doing. And um, we had beautiful calligraphy hand lettered flyers because. Back then, we also didn't have computers or anything like that. And as we were at the notice board putting up our flyer, my eye was caught by a lavender flyer that said, Flower Essences. This flyer told us about Cynthia Kemp of Desert Alchemy. And Cynthia Kemp of Desert Alchemy is still making flower essences, still selling flower essences, and still giving flower essence appointments. It's been 40 years that she's been doing this fantastic work. So as soon as I saw that flyer, I'd never heard of flower essences. I didn't know what they were. And I immediately felt, you have to learn this. So of course, they're on a flyer. There's a phone number. We also used landline phones back in those days. In fact, I still only use an online phone. So we went home and we telephoned Cynthia. And I said, I want to learn flower essences. Can I apprentice with you? And sure enough, she was very open to this. And what's more, at the time, I was an astrologer. I was practicing Western astrology, transpersonal astrology, in the school of Dane Radhya. So we did an exchange. I taught Cynthia astrology. 
she taught me flower essences and we made a special astrological flower essence kit for working with hard aspects so that's how we apprenticed that's how we worked together we worked on all the components of flower essences going out into the sonoran desert to make the essences also going up to the university to the botanical area and the greenhouses and making essences there, which we got permission to do because a friend's husband worked in those greenhouses. So making landscaping and botanical essence, uh, botanical garden essences, as well as Sonoran desert essences. It was a wonderful time. And I learned so much from Cynthia and I'm so happy that she is still doing this wonderful work. So what did we do? How are flower essences made? So to make a flower essence, you go out to where the flower is growing. There's really two ways to approach it. The first is you can decide you want to make a specific essence. Uh, this definitely happened when we made sagebrush. We had to drive in order to make Artemisia tridentata sagebrush that doesn't grow very much in the Boulder area. We had to drive more than 100 miles south. So we went on an outing for a day with a very specific intention to make a sagebrush essence and drove till we found a really good area of sagebrush. So that's one option is to plan. I want to make this essence on this day and go and do that. And the other option, most of the way it's worked for me, is you set forth and see what presents itself. What are the flowers that call out and say, today I want to be made into an essence? So you set forth in one of those two ways. You bring with you your equipment. Some people do use crystal balls. I like to use Pyrex custard cups. They're pretty unbreakable. So you go with your equipment, which includes a Pyrex custard cup, a glass uh, filter funnel, and uh, bottles four ounce amber glass bottles and special straining cloths. And if you're going forth to make wildflowers, some field guides as well, because you need to know that you're making the essence that you plan to make. And that involves a whole other thing of learning how to key plants which is another exciting activity in itself. You've got to be able to identify the plant that you made. So one way or another, you decide on the plant you want to make. Uh, you put some pure spring water in your glass bowl, in my case, Pyrex custard cup. So you're carrying that pure spring water often with you as well, Although if you do see spring water nearby, that's obviously ideal. You want an area where that particular flower is growing in great abundance and in its favorite habitat. Now you have to pick the flowers in the kindest way possible, either by using a leaf of that flower or a blade of grass so you're not touching the flower you're not contaminating it with your own energy but you're gently kindly picking it and dropping those blooms into your bowl of water until the entire surface of the water is covered with the flowers so the it's taught that you should do this for four hours cloudless high up in the mountains in Colorado where I've made so many of the essences 
they'll get done much more quickly because the light is so intense. So you might let it sit there and walk around. You might be making having several essences going at the same time, but you brew each one right at the site, right in the midst of that flower. You can use your pendulum to tell when it's done. When it's done, you use your special straining cloth and your special glass filter to strain the essence into your four ounce amber glass bottle. That is going to be your mother essence. So that four ounce amber glass bottle is filled with two ounces of brandy as a pre-fill, and then you add two ounces of your flower essence, and then you've got your mother essence. Amazing. Give it a good shake. That's how it's made, but how do you know what it's going to be used for? In an ideal world, and this is most of the way that I did this, you do the attunement then and there. So you take a little sip of the mother essence. This is really the only time that you take mother essence because mother essence is much too strong for everyday use. But everyone takes a teeny sip of the mother essence and you sit there right in the plant habitat and you close your eyes and you have a little tiny journey with that, that vibration. And it's lovely to do it in a group. And some people will receive words for many of the flower essences I've made. I received words. I received a poem, the song of that flower. Some people will receive visual images. Some people will receive body sensations, movements of energy. So everyone takes a little time to attune, get that feeling, and then you go around the circle of whoever is there and you write down each person's experience. And that's the attunement. And from that, you're going to realize what the essence is doing what the essence is for. It's going to be related to a number of things that create the signature of the plant. Let's think about Rocky Mountain Iris. Where do you have to go to make a beautiful Rocky Mountain Iris? You have to go sit in the mud. So there is something about its growing out of the mud and then floating up with its beautiful blue color that is going to be part of the signature of that essence. The signature has to do with where it grows, whether it's a native or a garden plant or an introduced or an invasive, whether it's abundant or rare, what it's growing next to, the overall environment where it's growing, the appearance of the flower, all of these things add up to the signature that are going to help you to understand what this flower has come to help us with, what this vibration is. So in 1986 and 1987, I was working with dear Cynthia in the Sonoran Desert and working in her beautiful apartment, cre uh, attuning. There's a whole nother level of attunement when you want to make a kit where we were attuning to what essence we would pick for each planet and so on. Then... We were thinking of moving to Taos, New Mexico because of the wonderful Hanuman Temple there and all of our friends in the satsang there. We had all our stuff in storage locker number 108 
in Taos, New Mexico. It's 1988. Amma, or Ammachi, literally comes to Taos and also to Santa Fe. And we see her there and we enjoy the visit very much. And we find out that she's going next to Boulder, which is where we initially were living before we moved to Tucson, pretty much, some wanderings in between. And we think about our dear friend Jyoti, Jyoti Wind, a great wise woman here in Boulder, who at that time had two little children. And we thought it would be so nice for Jyoti to see Amma. And for that to happen, it would be really nice if we went there to help with the children so she could concentrate on Amma and we could play with the children. So we got a ride in a blue school bus to Boulder, Colorado. Yes, we did go with Jyoti and watch the children for her to have the darshan, the blessings, the hugs with Amachi. But while we were in Boulder, we went to visit our friend David Turnland and his wife Sita and our dear friend Swami Paramananda appeared. He doesn't appear very often. He's a hermit. And when he saw us, he said, I was waiting for you to come. He'd been living in a cave for years, way up in the Rocky Mountains. And he said, I'm getting a little too old now to live year round in the cave. I bought me a cabin and I would like to go live in the cave for the summer. And I would like you two to watch the cabin. So that kind of scuppered the plans for to, for Taos. We moved all our stuff out of storage locker number 108 in Taos. And we moved ourselves into the cabin, which was in Mammoth Gulch, 10 miles from the tiny town of Tolland and under James Peak. So all by ourselves, basically 10 miles from the nearest dwelling with no vehicle. We dropped off there. We don't own a vehicle. We dropped off there in the beautiful nature. And of course, when I'm there, I receive a visit from the Rocky Mountain wildflower Deva. The Rocky Mountain wildflower Deva calls me and says, you are going to make flower essences from Rocky Mountain wildflowers. Okay, you don't really say no when a big deva like that gives you a call. So day after day, I went out in the beautiful subalpine and all of the first of my Rocky Mountain wildflower essences were made there in that subalpine forest. And for subsequent years, Sadananda and I would go backpacking, carrying with us the field guides, the brandy, the glass bottles, the filter funnel, the cloth, the whole works. And we made flower essences in the alpine, in the montane, in the subalpine. We made so many beautiful essences, made about 150 at least Rocky Mountain wildflower essences and attuned to them often together. Sometimes we went out with a group and attuned to them in groups. And we still have all of those wonderful essences that we made in those years. So now you know how I discovered flower essences how they're made, or at least you know to the level of how you make a mother essence, how I got involved in them, being called by Davis, and how we do the attunement. The next steps, once you have your mother essence, you're now going to start using one ounce amber glass bottles, and you're going to do a 50-50 or 40-60 of water and brandy in those one-ounce bottles. 
and you're going to take 10 drops of your mother essence. You're going to put it in that one ounce dropper bottle and then you're going to succuss it, which means you're going to vigorously tap the bottom of the bottle to shake that vibration into the whole bottle. I usually do 108 succussions. This is your stock level. So if you do come in to Alandi Ayurveda Clinic for a flower essence for yourself or your animal, what we're going to be bringing out and dowsing is going to be those stock level essences. Those are still too strong to take. They'd still give you too much of a jolt. So when you come in for your flower essence reading, we're going to use a pendulum and we're going to douse all of the boxes of essences. I still have Arizona essences. The brand is such a great preservative. And I have all of the 150 plus Rocky Mountain wildflower essences that I made. And we're going to use a pendulum. First of all, we're going to have you bring forth your intention. Intention is everything with a vibrational remedy. The remedy responds to your intention. So first, we're going to clarify intention. Based on that intention, we're going to douse all of the essences. And I found that typically we end up with five or six different essences. We're going to douse all the essences to get your formula for that one time by dousing all the essences. And then when you have your approximately five or six stock bottles, we're going to put five drops of each one into a one ounce amber glass bottle that's just filled with spring water because this dosage level is going to get used up before it has time to go off as long as it's not left in a hot glove compartment in a car. It's not going to go moldy in the short amount of time that it will take you to use it up. So we're going to put those five drops of each of the chosen essences into that dosage level bottle. And again, that is going to be succussed. And then some mantras are going to be said it's going to be held up to the third eye and some mantras are going to be said because as Paracelsus taught, the remedy grows in the hands of the physician. So the remedy has been chosen, but then it needs to grow in the hands of the physician. And then there it is, the flower essence. Sometimes people want to get a refill of their flower essence, just like you can get a refill of your herbal formula. But flower essences work differently than herbal formulas. So we don't do automatic refills. We start over and douse the whole thing again. And it's a true fact that one of my dear friends asked for a refill. I said, no, we did the dowsing and all the exact same flowers simply came up from the dowsing. So if you need the same thing, the same thing will come up again. But very likely you have moved on. So how do they help? We can imagine that your soul is a vast meadow of flowers. All of the flowers are your beautiful qualities. But some of the flowers are asleep. And because of those flowers that are asleep, you're experiencing some blockages, some obstacles, some stresses, some difficulties, some issues in your life. And when we douse those flowers that come up, we can imagine that they represent the flowers in your inner flower meadow that are asleep. And we would like to wake them up. We want to awaken those very special flowers for you. The ones that are right for you at that time, next time, 
we might need to awaken different flowers because you have moved on. So that's how they help. Another way that uh, we think about flower essences are pattern and quality. The pattern is like the, the things that the essence works on. That's like when that essence isn't properly awake in you, you'll have a certain pattern, like with wild rose, you could have a pattern of, pattern of feeling very listless, very lethargic. When, when you take the essence, then it enables that quality to blossom. The quality that that flower brings will be awakened. It's a wonderful adjunct therapy. How does this fit into Ayurveda? Well, Ayurveda allows for three kinds of healing. There's the Yukti Vrapya Prashai. That's the main thing that we do when you come in for your appointment. And the Yukti Vyaprashai means rational therapy, where we take into account an array of different factors, your constitution, your imbalance, your complaint, the season, your location, all of those factors have to be taken into account. So we put together a herbal formula that's perfect for you. We're also going to give suggestions about eating, nutrition, and we're also going to give lifestyle suggestions. So that Yukti Vyaprasha is the backbone of what we do. There is also what's known as Sattva Vajaya, which is psychotherapy, different kinds of therapy. And there is Deva Vyaprasha, the divine therapies. So all of the subtle therapies and vibrational medicines can come under Deva Vyaprashai. So in a way, you can say this is part and parcel of Ayurveda because all of the subtle therapies are part and parcel of Ayurveda. They work on subtle levels where the herbs can't get to. When nothing can get to the blockages, the obstacles, the things you want to embody but don't seem able to, Turn to the flowers, awaken the flowers within you. It is such a wonderful thing. It's very interesting making flower essences because I'm not even knowing, I'm not looking at the name of the flowers that are being doused. I might have an idea. Oh, I think maybe you need this, this, and this. I'm just simply keeping an open mind. We are holding your intention in view. If you're in person, you are touching the boxes of essences. If you're on Zoom, I'm doing that for you, holding your intention as I touch them. I'm always astonished as I find out what essences get picked and how perfectly they fit your intention. It's amazement, wonder, and delight every time, because what could flowers ever really be but amazement, wonder, and delight? So now you know what flower essences are, how I came into the picture with flower essences, uh, how they're made, how we attune and find out what they're for, what they do to help, and you also know how they fit into Ayurveda. So hope you enjoyed today's podcast episode and we'll see you again next week. Namaste. Thank you for tuning in to Ayurveda and Spirituality with Alakananda Ma. We hope today's exploration has ignited a spark of curiosity and insight within you. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave us a five-star review and share it with a friend. For more enlightening discussions and practical wisdom on Ayurveda and spirituality, subscribe and join our Facebook group, Alundi Ayurveda. To allow us to continue sharing valuable content, consider donating to Alundi Ashram, 
The links will be in the show notes. Until next time, may you walk the path of Ayurveda with grace and embrace the light of spiritual wisdom in your journey. Sukantim Pushtivadu